What's up guys, Kane here. I've got uh, Aquanim and Adam 2 here on Ravage. It's a 1v1 today, by the way. Aquanim in the northeast here with the red cloaky bot factory. In the southwest is Adam. He's got the screen jump jet factory opening up with a puppy or uh, two to follow. And uh, wow, quite a few constructors lined up as well. This is a nice build order. Interesting to see. It looks like he's going to be going for some heavy expansion. Uh, should be a pretty uphill battle for Aquanim here. I mean, Adam 2, more of a team's player as far as I know, but definitely no slouch in the 1v1 room. Has a pretty significant elo advantage as well. Um, I haven't seen him around though, so he might be a little out of practice as far as the 1v1s go, I guess. We'll just have to see. He certainly has a nice factory advantage here. Uh, these puppies are going to take out the clay. It's really no troubles at all. And uh, let's see, 50 middle for a puppy versus, what is it, 65 for a glaive? Yeah, 65 there. So um, anyway, pretty nice advantage here in the Raider game. And I've fallen in love with puppies recently. Uh, you can one-shot metal extractors. You can one-shot the glaives. You can take out ravens with three puppies for, like, ridiculous cost. So, uh, I mean, puppies are just like my new favorite unit, at least for the next little bit. Um, unfortunately, they do have some problems with LTEs and uh, really anything that can shoot them uh, before they can fire themselves. So, uh, yeah, anyway, it looks like a little bit of a soft contain here coming from Adam 2. Mostly just looking for a uh, little bit of advanced warning whenever uh, whenever Aquanim moves out to expand here. And an early tip from Aquanim. Interesting to see. Definitely the right call on a map like this with a, uh, well, a ramp as a bottleneck. Of course, that doesn't apply to the jump jet factory. But, well, yeah, you know, I'm not really sure what he's going to do with it. Maybe plant it down here on the southern edge to uh, preempt any pyro ambushes, which is a very common way to end the game here. Um, basically, you just line up some pyros, you jump onto this ledge, and then, uh, well, your opponent, who has probably not built enough LOTs right here, sort of uh, sits there and cries a little bit as you move through and uh, dismantle his base. So, anyway, Aquanim seeking to prevent that from happening. Definitely the right strategy. Constructor coming out to uh, expand down here on this lower plateau. Looks like the commander's going to be heading up to the center here. Uh, going to be fortifying the position after building some metal extractors. And, uh, yeah, should be pretty nice to see. I'm not too familiar with Adam 2's style. I know Aquanim has a very um, dynamic, sort of raider-heavy style, which I like to see. Um, uh, I would expect that Adam's going to be a bit more defensive in his play style, uh, just being a team's player. Typically, what team's players do when they come to the 1v1 room is uh, basically try to play it like a team's game, which is, you know, they'll, like, rush to the mid and then pork and, uh, I don't know, try to <laughs> rush a TDM or something. But uh, Adam 2 is, is not that type of player at all. Uh, like I mentioned, very confident in the 1v1 room. So, anyway, I guess that's enough commentary about that. Um, so, Pyro's coming up. A couple of constructors out here for Adam, too. And, uh, well, this is a very brave commander. He's level 0. Has just one defender here to, uh, well, defend him. I guess he's mostly relying on the puppies to have scared away Aquanim from sending out any raider forces. And, like we saw earlier, that soft contain definitely gave him some advanced knowledge. Um, and, of course, <laughs> Would, uh, well, let's see, it looks like a couple of these puppies have gone down. I would imagine that they've gone down um, trying to kill some glaives. So that probably thinned out the raider force as well. Oops, this is a little bit of a mistake. This probably needs to come and defend the constructor. Uh, good thing this guy was here. Otherwise, this glaive would very much have the uh, run of the place taken out. Well, I guess he would have gotten slowed anyway, so not the biggest deal. Pyro takes out the glaive, no sweat. And, uh, well, yeah, not much, not much to gain from a move like that. A few glaives now heading through this sort of a flanking maneuver. Looks like they're going to be heading out... Uh, well, I don't imagine they'll make it all the way out to the far edge of the map here in the sea. But anyway, heading out west so far. Probably going to head down south after that or maybe work to secure this plateau. Uh, neither player really making motions to uh, head towards these plateaus. Um, typically, you see them grab the plateau closest to them. Although sometimes they do go across the map instead. Very rarely, though. It's, I mean, a much shorter distance here. And so easier to fortify. Uh, yeah, but we do see the glaives coming up, and yep, yeah, looks like they'll be posting up on the top of this hill, looking to catch any constructors that come out here without uh, without an escort. This puppy uh, basically trying to do the same thing or chase down these glaives. And uh, here we can see Aquanim has brought his commander out to the center as well. Wow, a couple of pyros charging in. It's going to put the commander in an awkward position. He gets the defender up in time and a few glaives to back him up. Going to be tanking a few of those pyro shots. Takes one down, no problem. Scares the other one away. No sweat whatsoever. Probably should build an LLT to help defend against the uh, heavy pyros, which it seems to be... Uh, Adam's plan here heading into the mid game one tick as well placed defensively so that he can try and catch uh, any pyro balls off guard if they happen to come through here very much undefended approach down here on this low land as well um, could probably afford to send a constructor down there pretty quickly not understanding myself exactly why these wind gens are being built up I guess maybe to overdrive these a bit uh, you know what? I guess I don't really know. It looks like it's working out well enough. Let's take a look at the overdrive. Ah, uh, 8%. So, I'm not really sure I would build the wind gens there anyway. They're super vulnerable. And, well, you're just wasting time, I think, because you could go down here and expand and build more wind gens up here where they're much more profitable. You can see these are doing a much better job, and uh, the overdrive here has gone much better for Aquanim. 
Anyway, uh, fortifying in this position down here. Should be grabbing this reclaim here in a minute. And uh, there's a little engagement here. This pirate taking out a couple of the glaives. This pirate needs to jump back, and then this last one here can basically clean everything up. Manages to scare this glaive away. He's probably going to burn down. There we go. And, uh, wow, very nice. A uh, group of three pyros now. Very decisively controlling this western plateau. A few puppies up here on the eastern one. Going to be catching these glaives probably as they come through the bottleneck here. Uh, no defense is to help the glaives out against these puppies, so could go pretty poorly. Uh, these puppies are mobilized, and no, they're actually just heading down to the low land. Looking to uh, protect this constructor, which has been expanding out here as well. So economically, it looks like Adam 2 does have a slight advantage. Uh, probably because he rushed the center a bit quicker, and he's also overdriven these mechs pretty heavily. Um, interesting to see, he's sort of made a wall of sorts here. I think Glaives could still make it through here, but uh, the larger units would certainly have a harder time. And there we go, these puppies, wow, doing a great job, and with the splash, da splash damage, managed to take out a ton of those Glaives. And uh, here's the Zeus, perfect call for the Pyros, and it looks like, yeah, these two Zeus are going to be tearing apart these four Pyros. No sweat. Bring this guy back to repair, and uh, you're good to go, Aquanum. That was a really nice move. Uh, really unfortunate for Adam, too. Getting caught off guard by the Zeus's is always a nasty surprise. You should really be expecting the Zeus's, especially right around this time. It's about six minutes into the game, so... I mean, for there to not be a Zeus out would be a massive blunder on Aquanim's part. And so, yeah, pretty heavily going into Zeus's at this point, Aquanim. And, uh, wow, pretty aggressive push here from Adam, too. Not sure exactly what happened to that tick, but it seems to have gotten cleared out. A few small engagements here. Um, these glaives trying to poke in, ultimately going to overwhelm this puppy, and I think this constructor is going to go down, uh, unless this LLT comes up in time to defend it. And, uh, pretty strong skirmish going on here, like I mentioned. Probably just a few defenders would help. Uh, these glaives just needed to take out the defenders, and then a couple more defenders would take out the LLTs without taking any damage. Would also help to fortify the position so that Adam 2 could not retake it. Aquanim, I mean, holding really well against this. Adam 2 still with a fairly large economic advantage, but I think Aquanim is outplaying him militarily. This is great, and this commander's in a bad position. Maybe a bit too aggressive with the glaives, and there's no reason for the constructor to be out here for sure. Probably hang back, repair, reclaim. You have so much build power right here that, I mean, it's absolutely perfect. LT's coming up. Yeah, that's uh, understandable. I'm um, trying to preempt any more pyro invasions. Puppy's now coming out, so that LT is going to work out absolutely perfectly. Um, I don't think these puppies can take out the Zeus for cost, or if so, it's uh, just barely. Wow, look at all that damage. Oh, and it does go down. How many puppies was that? Just enough. You saw it was that last pup puppy that got the kill. And, uh, ooh, that's unfortunate. Uh, I don't think these constructors need to be idling. I think they need to be repairing and reclaiming here, Aquanim. But, uh, oh, here we go. Pretty quick air switch. Probably needs some more build power. I guess he'll have it once this uh, factory comes up. Needs to be paying more attention here, though. Adam 2 is fortifying this position with defenders. Yeah, forced to retreat now. Aquanim going to lose his LTs here as well. Uh, potentially the chance to reclaim him here as well. Uh, yeah, kind of kind of a mistake to not repair and push forward again, but um, there's so much going on here. And plus, he's probably busy orchestrating this air switch as well. Uh, not to mention the fact that he was uh, accessing for at least a moment. Adam 2 maintaining the economic advantage, uh, creeping slowly, slowly here. Not taking this Western Plateau. Actually, neither player having taken these plateaus. Um, I guess ultimately a minor issue, but uh, Aquanim definitely needs to clear out this low land and take that at the very least. This constructor looks like he's going to go down to a couple of glaives here, um, very slowly at least. Nope, two LLTs are set up. They're uh, going to defend this constructor who retreats very brilliantly into the uh, cover of these LLTs, so very well executed maneuver there from Adam 2. A few pyros lining up, going to suicide into this pack of Zeus. I re really don't agree with this push from Adam 2. Um, the two spread out. Yeah, look at that. And uh, ultimately, that many Zeus's are going to take out that many pyros. No sweat here. Just looking at the metal alone, uh, we have 1,050 metal here in, uh, in Zeus's against like 800 metal in pyros, which they counter directly. So, uh, I mean, just really not the best decision. I think Aquanim just needs to be repairing more, though. Um, he's building a lot, but I think repair is, is really important when you're using heavy assault units like this. But uh, once again, it's always hard to remember to do all the small things. I have the advantage of just watching and not playing, so... Anyway, more pyros lining up here to the west from Adam 2. Not ready to give up this uh, this assault quite yet. That's quite a bit of reclaim here. I'm just waiting for uh, Aquanim to pick it up. Yeah, I, I can't imagine Adam 2 really wants to be providing him with any more moderators coming in now, or at least just one. Um, no air switch or anything from Adam 2, so gonna have a difficult time dealing with the napalm bombers that uh, Aquanim is producing. That's an interesting choice. I think he's probably aiming for this defender nest right here. Um, although I'm not sure. Two Zeus's coming down with the support of the constructor who's repairing them. Taking out the LT, really no problem at all. Going to be able to come through here and actually clear out this entire southern expansion. Um, pretty much uncontested. 
Wow, this is a ton of constructors. Probably a few too many from Adam 2, but, uh, well, hard to say. Kyle's coming through, trying to do what they can. Managed to take down one of the Zeus's. That moderator definitely helped out, but ultimately the Zeus's will overwhelm the Pyros and massive defensive wars and this jack coming in to tear some tear some defenders up no goes for the commander instead no no that is not the right call is he going to take it down is this commander going to go down to the jack oh no wow what an unfortunate bit of miss micro there Zeus has managed to clean up the jack afterwards but uh that commander really should have been able to take him out it looks like there's some sort of uh well collision or hitbox thing preventing them from firing here the napalm bombers coming in looks like uh nope they'll be passing right by these defenders and uh, there we go. Zeus is taking down Adam 2's commander as well. And uh, they do ultimately swing back around for these defenders. And now the Zeus's will creep through the center here. Pretty easily chewing it up. These puppies coming through are going to give the Zeus's some trouble. Interesting to see how it's going to work out. These pyros looping back around to help support the puppies as well. Not wanting to suicide into these Zeus's anymore, which is, I mean, definitely the right call. That was uh, really an, an unfortunate decision from Adam 2. And uh, wow, look at that. Charging right into these Zeus's. It's hard to say. There is a lot of metal right here, even though it's the direct counters. No, but they ultimately, uh, ooh, it's a little bit too much friendly fire. And then uh, Napalm Bomber coming in afterwards to help clean them up. I don't think Napalm Bombing these Pyros is the best decision, but uh, ultimately, I don't think it matters. Ooh, looks like they're going to tear apart these Constructors. No, have the chance, but there's enough Constructors here. They're just all repairing each other. Like, uh, <laughs> everybody help your neighbor here. Ultimately able to defend against that. No sweat at all. Akunum has a massive military advantage at this point. And uh, this Jack coming in here to try to do what it can. Gets stunned out by the Zeus's. Um, using a heavy heavy unit like this is just not the right call unless you can actually match the scale of Akunum's forces because the Zeus's, of course, will just stun out a single unit. Uh, with that, I'm going to take a quick break to drink some water. Okay, sorry about that, guys. Uh, still, still building my voice muscles. Uh, not quite up to speed with Shadow Fury quite yet, but uh, at least I remembered to pause before my voice gave out this time. Zeus is pushing in from the south here from Aquanim, and a uh, few here trying to repair up with his caretaker and all of the constructors. Tons of reclaim as well for Aquanim. Uh, wow, 3.4k in addition to the 700 metal. It still has up here as well. Um, definitely needs to get reclaiming. Looks like, I mean, there's enough constructors in here to definitely get at it. He's actually still excessing. He needs more energy is what he needs. Um, I would get right on building probably just a couple of solars to power me through this quick decline and then uh, fusion afterwards uh, pretty much immediately. That's just what I would do. I'm not sure that's the best decision. Uh, maybe just more wind gens would do it, but um, I, I, wow. It's unfortunate you can't take advantage of that reclaim. Ultimately, these Zeus's do get stopped. Uh, looks like one of them went down. Probably the second one as well. Or uh, might have retreated. More Napalm Bombers coming up now. Dealing some damage to these Constructors. Taking out that nest of Defenders. No sweat. Between that and the sort of stampede of Zeus's here, there's really not much Adam, do, Adam 2 can do to hold this. Um, as, long as, these, as long as these Zeus's are cautious about how they proceed uh, and take out these Constructors before they get that Stardust up. There we go. No problems whatsoever. Uh, I mean, really, just a slow push is going to win Aquan in the game here. He has all the reclaim. He has the absolutely the right unit counters. So, uh, I mean, there's not a whole lot left for Adam 2 to do, although I did favor Adam 2 to, at the start of the game, and Aquanim has turned that around, so uh, definitely a possibility for a comeback here. Still plenty of time, although this is certainly a big problem. Not sure what uh, what Adam 2 is thinking as far as dealing with these Zeus's. Uh, well, let's see, what, what would I would do? Placeholder moderator is probably what I would try, but uh, it's so slow on a map like this. Looks like he's going to be opting for the sumo. I'm not sure that's a much better decision. Uh, it'll be nice to see how that works out. Napalm Bomber coming in here. Looks like uh, bombing out the Stardust. Interesting choice. And then hitting a couple of the Constructors. This wave of Zeus is just creeping ever forward. Um, slowly but steadily. Uh, pressuring their way through the center position here from Adam 2. Probably don't even need to go through the middle. Um, maybe just taking out the one Metal Extractor would be fine. And then coming around to this western side here. Which is much less heavily defended. Uh, Aquanum does have the potential to have that knowledge. I mean he does have this Vulture flying around here. So... Uh, he should be able to figure that one out. I guess it doesn't ultimately matter. Basically, from this position, I can't imagine Aquanim screwing up badly enough to lose this. Although, uh, I've seen crazier things happen. And wow, even managing to turret push here with a constructor down in the south. Um, so he's taken actually the eastern side, this northwestern lowland, and the southeastern lowland. So now he has not only a massive economic advantage. Uh, well, they're actually tied for military, interestingly enough. Mostly because of the sumo here. Uh, I'll be curious to see how he deals with the sumo. I think that might be really effective against the Zeus. You know what? I have no idea. Sumo is so wacky now. I have no idea how it's going to fare out in pretty much any engagement. So, 
Uh, well, really, I can't wait to see. If it can get a good jump on these Zeus's, it might be able to crush all of them with one fell swoop. And uh, here we go, just about to get into jump range, firing those Newton cannons, and just needs to get a bit closer to get the jump on. No, should be using attraction, not repulsion here from these Graviton beams. Oh my gosh, this is a huge mistake. He needs to be pulling the Zeus's in so that he can just get a good jump on all of them. No, ultimately pushing them away. Mm, well, he might have a plan with that, but I'm not sure what the best... Yeah, see, exactly. With the jacks here to back it up, you definitely want to be pulling. Here we go. Now setting the Zeus, or the uh, sumo to pull, getting one of the Zeus's. Oh, wow, and that little snare works out beautifully. If he can just pluck out one Zeus at a time into these jacks, that's exactly what he needs to do to uh, turn this game around. Take control of the reclaim, and then uh, from there, well, the game should be pretty easily won. Oh, boy, but too many Zeus's now. The sumo needs to jump on the Zeus's, or else there's going to be big trouble here. These jacks are going way too far forward. Nope, it's not going to play out. It had the potential, but... Uh, yeah, ultimately, just sort of fat-fingered the execution there, and, uh, well, does manage to take out the Stardust. Both the Jacks have been stunned out at this point, so the only damage that can happen basically comes from the Sumo being able to jump. And now the Sumo completely stun-locked by all of these Zeus's, and, uh, therein we see the bad idea that is, uh, using a heavy unit against a Zeus Ball. They just, I mean, if there's not that many units, the Zeus's can just focus fire and stun it out. That's... I'm... I don't know. I don't have anything more to say about that. That's just why you really shouldn't try something like that. Um, yeah, like I mentioned, I feel like Mod Placeholder would have done better, but ultimately Factory Switch is probably your best bet. Wow, what a devastating Napalm. Took out a ton of wind generators uh, with that bombing run. Absolutely perfect. And now these Zeus's are going to be basically creeping down the center. Still have that Sumo to deal with, but... Uh, oh, wait, no, this is a second sumo? Yeah, a, a second sumo coming up. I just, I don't know, man. If it didn't work the first time, what's uh, what's the definition of insanity? But uh, anyway, he's going to be trying it again. Hopefully he has it set to attract this time. Um, yeah, so it is set to attract, but these Zeus's just pull back anyway. At this point, there's such a critical mass of Zeus's. The Napalm Bombers are going to do such a good job of cleaning up the base here. These caretakers are forced to spend their build power repairing themselves, so it's not even going into the factory. Uh, this jack isn't even going to be completed for 30 seconds so i mean at this point it's pretty firmly aquanim's game it has been for quite some time and really we're just waiting for uh, adam 2 to acknowledge that fact he thinks he still has a chance i mean with the sumo here but uh, i guess you know i have the benefit of uh seeing the entire map but i mean still if i were in adam 2's position you, you can sort of feel when your opponent is overwhelming you Aquanim has more than double the economy of Adam 2 at this point. He has air on lockdown. Uh, he has Adam 2's really only strategy at this point. Completely locked down with the Zeus's. I, I just don't understand why he's trying this again. It's just not going to work out. It didn't the first time. And now there's even more Zeus's there to stun out the sumo. And uh, he does manage to whip one of those Zeus's right into the puppies. But it's just not enough. It, I mean, especially now that there's enough defense here between the Gauss Cannon and the uh, Stinger. And all of these constructors, who, by the way, still need to be reclaiming. But uh, like I get, like I mentioned before, it doesn't ultimately matter. But, uh, I mean, this game is just so solidly awkward. And, uh, oh, there we go. We saw the puppies take out that Napalm Bomber, like I mentioned earlier. These puppies are great anti-air. They're really cost-effective, too. I think it's three puppies to take out most of the bombers, uh, which is 150 metal. So they can take out a bomber for basically half cost, which is really nice. And it's also great against air sharks, too, because you're going to be building them as scouts anyway, so... But uh, I guess that's neither here nor there. The Sumo trying to do what it can to creep up through the center position. And uh, I don't know, you guys. This is a little bit hard to watch. I, I hope you forgive me. I'm just going to fast forward through this because, I mean, ultimately, Aquanim is not, you know, uh, a new enough player to, um, to to screw up badly enough to put Adam 2 into a winning position. So I'm just going to go ahead and fast forward through here. We're basically going to watch these Zeus's creep in after they take out the Sumo up the ramp and... Uh, there's just no recourse for Adam 2. He barely has any, you know, build power. He's got these constructors out here trying to do what they can to set up some LTs, but these Zeus's really, really have no problem with the LTs, not to mention the mass amounts of economy. And here we go. Aquanum actually switched to puppies himself just to get the Grey Goo going on that reclaim. And, uh, well, I mean, there you have it. The Zeus's come around and flank, and, uh, yeah, really just any second now I would expect him to be throwing in the towel. So many Zeus's at the doorstep, and, uh, so, yeah, like I mentioned, there we go. Throws in the towel, Adam 2, and uh, wow, excellent victory, Aquanim. That was a great job, and uh, I mean, that's what happens when those teams players jump into the 1v1 room. You know, it's, uh, I'm just talking a little bit of trash, but yeah, that was an excellent win on Aquanim's part. Basically, uh, I know Adam 2 had a pretty big advantage in the beginning of the game, and I believe the grass will bear this out. Yeah, check that out. Adam 2 had better production for like three quarters of the game, 
but what won it for Aquanim was the intelligent use of unit counters. I know that pyros do really well and puppies do really well against claves in the early part of the Clokebot factory, but once you start balling Zeus's, you're pretty much forced for your opponent to uh, either you know try and do something tricky with Sumo Jack, which is super expensive and high risk, or a mod placeholder, which is so easy to counter with glaives or uh, an air switch like that. So um, really, if you're going jump jet, it's it's on a larger map like this, I think it's just an early game factory and you should be looking to switch uh, pretty quickly into something that'll bear you out into the middle and late game um, better than pyros or placeholders will. It's just, especially on such a large open map where you have to be everywhere at once, uh, the immobility of the later, of the mid late game units in the jump jet factory is just, it's not, in my opinion, a great decision on a map like this. So, uh, yeah, ultimately, Aquanim with the comeback. Excellent job, man. That was just a beautiful game. I really enjoyed it. I hope you guys did as well. If I missed anything, let me know in the comments, and I'll catch you next time.